the social and emotional forces that Derek talked about come together from every student and from the instructor to create a course climate as part of the affective domain. I actually don't see the affective domain as separate from the cognitive domain in that they influence each other quite a lot. And I will give an illustration of that in the following story. Chris is a brilliant student who is taking, was taking at the time, a statistics class. And the instructor one day did um, an activity that is in general um, good pedagogy. It's commendable. The instructor passed around um, a series of index cards asking the students to record their height and then check whether they were male or female. So the good part of this is that it's always um, advisable, it generates motivation when you collect your own students' data and then you use that to illustrate statistical topics, the students feel invested. Um, except what went wrong today for Chris. Um, I surmise that at the time of the semester that this story happened, the instructor was going to use this data to uh, put box plots on the board or on Excel uh, about heights for males and females and then compare them and maybe introduce uh, probably a t-test for the difference of two means. I don't know for sure because Chris actually doesn't really remember what happened in class that day because as soon as um, this card was passed around, this um, an in internal monologue started for Chris. Chris is part of a growing number of students, of people in general, who identify as genderqueer. Uh, Chris does not identify as male or female. Maybe neither, maybe both, maybe a third gender altogether. So Chris did not have a whole lot of options on this card. And so this is sort of the thought process that happened. Oh my God, I can't believe this just happened. What am I going to do now? He's expecting me to put something up. Oh, I, I, I don't want to pick male. I don't want to pick female. Uh, maybe I should just leave it blank. Uh, but then he's going to you know, ask, why do people leave it blank? What if he scolds me? Um, maybe I should just draw another box in there and, and call it neither and check that. Oh, but then they're going to make fun of me. I don't know. What if he's prejudiced? Uh, what if this then counts um, against my grade somehow? Oh my God, he's coming back. I need to figure out what to do. Uh, 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 oh, I'm such a coward. I should have... Uh, why did I just um, check my birth gender? I should have, I should have done something different. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Uh, I'm so disappointed in myself. No, oh, I hate myself. Or oh, maybe I should drop this course. So that's, um, that's what happened, the way Chris recounted this to me. Emotional interference happened, and it interfered with cognitive processes. And it was very distracting from the content at hand. Chris was not able to focus and learn the formulas and such, even though um, Chris had been doing well in the course, had no problems whatsoever. Uh, it just happened that the well-meaning instructor uh, created conditions that uh, made Chris feel not included in the course. And so because this has serious consequences on learning, we should think about this a little more. Research on climate started in the 80s, and it was part of gender studies about documenting, especially for women in STEM, the chilly climate is what they called it uh, at the time, which included blatant examples of even sexual harassment and groping in the classroom. Fortunately, those things really don't happen anymore, but have shaped how people think about these issues. They think about chilly climate uh, ideas as a deplorable thing that should never happen, that thankfully is not happening at the blatant level anymore. And then if it happens a little bit, the women or any other group of students or any other individual student uh, gets a little picked on maybe by some innocuous things. Ah, uh, that's just regrettable. But instead, research, later research has confirmed 
has demonstrated that chilly climate actually affects learning. It affects critical thinking, it affects persistent, persistence in the major and in school, it affects preparation for a professional career through a series of mediating mechanisms. First and foremost, this idea of uh, generating emotions, like in the story that I just said. If a course generates emotions that have to do with frustration, or maybe shame, or guilt, or anger, that is not going to involve students in further opportunities for learning, as opposed to a course that generates surprise and excitement and affirmation for students. Climate regulates the circulation of knowledge. If some students are shutting themselves off from discussion, they're not providing perspectives that might benefit everybody else in the classroom. This impacts the development of skills that we all care about, such as leadership skills and citizenship skills. It can channel energies away from learning or toward it. Let's take the case of, say, um, LGBT students in the closet who are worried about monitoring their speech. So they're using non-gender specific pronouns in discussions and avoid mentioning websites or, 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 or activities that they did or places where they were that might reveal things that they don't want to be revealed. So that's where their mental energies are going. And each uh, um, little mental calculus that's happening in that direction is energy that is not spent on learning. And climate communicates expectations placed on students and ultimately power dynamics, where we walk in with already ideas, fixed ideas of who is going to be smart and successful in this class, who is going to be dependable, who is going to be uh, making excuses, who is going to be uh, trustworthy, and so on.